You've heard of the honeymoon period. To sell more products on Amazon, you need to blitzkrieg when you first launch that product. Well, you need sales to get sales. I'm gonna be breaking down what that means and how you can use that information to grow your own Amazon sales right now. My name is Stephen Pope and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. So we're gonna first start out on one of my recent product experiences where I had this Mr. and Mrs. Tumblr set. Comes in a box, it's got some nice straws in there, uh, and there's a two for one or cup, right? Really great product. A typical tumbler these days goes for about $15 on Amazon, so I'm selling it at $24 right now. Now, here's the thing. When I had this at $26, bucks, I had no sales. I was at the BSR at $388,000. So I said, you know what? I've been doing this for a year. You can see my year of history right here. It just never did well. Did okay when we first launched the product in like the August of 2021. But after that, it just pretty much festered. Never was... A particular emphasis point. We tried to raise it to 30 bucks for Christmas. Nothing ever moved, right? And so it stunk. It was a total dead, dead weight product. So I did multiple optimizations. I switched the main image. I did all of these things. None of those things worked. So I eventually said, you know what? I'm just going to lower the price down. And so about a month ago, I lowered it down to 14 99. Now watch the BSR take a nosedive, which is good in this case because when it comes to BSR, it's like golf scores. The lower you get, the better. So we're at 388,000 and then boom, I drop off the cliff because I lowered down the price and I got up to 30,000 BSR, but it got better. 18,000 BSR and it got better. 10,000 BSR. And by the way, this entire time, I wasn't even paying attention. I had actually forgotten about the product and I was focused on other things like running my My Amazon Guy agency. And so uh, the point of this story is to show that once sales started coming in, they snowballed because when the BSR improves, the keyword ranking improves. Amazon takes your product and essentially gives it airlift. It's like an airplane taking off. If you're not in the air yet, you might be able to get some sort of distance. But the moment you're off of that runway and you start to take off, the air just propels you and you're able to make great distances, you're able to uh, make altitude, right? And so the same thing exists with BSR. So whenever you're launching a product, you may have heard of the phrase, the honeymoon period. Well, what's happening during the honeymoon period is essentially it's the best time of the love of your life. No, it's the best time for your product to make love to Amazon, essentially, right? And, and essentially what your product is doing is it's sending signals to Amazon, like, hey, you need to pay attention to me. And what better way to tell Amazon's algorithm to pay attention to you than to generate sales? If you launch a product and it's only doing one sale a week, Amazon's gonna write the product off. It's a dud, they don't care. They don't make any money on you, right? Now, if you launch your product and you get 1,000 units moving in the first 30 days, they're going to leapfrog your product in the search page results. Let's pop over into Cerebro here to look at the keyword distribution of this product. So it's at 1,400 products, 1,400 sponsored keyword products, and 2,400 organic. Really close to my golden ratio. I like to see one sponsored keyword to two organic. If you want to learn more about the golden ratio, click on this video next. And, and so when you're you're getting the keywords off the ground, especially on a new product. But in the case of this one, like we showed you, this was, this was a year old dud, absolute dud. And I turned more than 500 units in sales in basically 12 days. And the point of this is to show that once the sales started going in, it generated lift. Well, the benefit of generating those sales is that these keywords right here, these organic keywords started to index better. Now, without sales, you lose your indexing because you're not converting for sales. Therefore, Amazon says, I'd rather give a, a spot in the search result to a competitor. So, for example, let's just take uh, one of these keywords. Uh, we're going to do bridal shower registry by bride's name search. Now, that's kind of a very specific keyword, but we're going to click on that one. What comes up is a bunch of Mr. and Mrs. Wright products. In here, you can see all kinds of information about what a bride could give away, or you could give to the Mr. and Mrs. At a, at a wedding, right? So it's a great product. Here you can see I've got a sponsored keyword that showed up in slot number two. 
and the organic result has since fallen off. It's no longer in position one at time of shooting this video, but it's showing up on the back end of three. Part, part of my challenge right now is I, I sold out of those 500 units uh, and I wasn't paying attention and I actually stocked out. And so my BSR now is at 60,000 at time of shooting this video. I'm rushing a new stock. The question is going to be is, can I get back to that $15 price point on the product right here? Um, the BSR at the top 10,000, or can I, can I get that BSR while commanding a higher price? And I believe the answer to that question will be yes. I believe that by simply restocking the products and having availability that it will start to turn units again. So I have, and I believe that because you need sales to get sales. Now that I have 500 units of conversion data, Amazon is going to reward me more. But when we're in the search results, whether it's bridal shower registry by bride's name search or another product, you're able to uh, go through here and essentially products that Amazon know will convert are going to show up higher in the search results. They're going to, and, and, and in this particular one, we don't actually even see a, a brand headline ad, possibly because Amazon is taking that slot themselves by using a wedding registry. But these organic results your product will benefit from having higher BSR, best sellers rank, and the ability to be seen because you're converting more sales. Let's take a look at one of my competitors here, a Mr. and Mrs. Coffee Mug. Theirs looks a little bit nicer, truth be told. It looks very much more like the sort of thing you'd get at a wedding. Packaging investment makes a really big difference. So in here, when we look at their BSR, and they are running a limited time deal right now, so you can see uh, the price knocked down. But if we look at their history as well, you can see here's the price point at 23 when they were at 27. They, they had a nice big uh, jump down. And the BSR before the change was in the five to 10,000. So you can see the, the blue line right here. The moment they lowered the price, they're down in the 4,000s, 3,000s down here. So price obviously has a major impact on sales. That's pretty logical, everybody understands that. But, but the fact of the matter is, is after you have a price reduction and you raise the price back, will you have more sales at the original price than you had before? And that's a really easy hypothesis to test. And that's exactly what we're testing right now on the Mr. and Mrs. Tumblr set. I believe that when we restock this and have, uh, have it back at full speed, that we will will have a superior BSR to prior to running the discount. The same will probably be the case for my competitor here with the mug set. And after they raise their price back, let's say they go back up to $28, I believe their BSR won't stay at $3,800, but it will stay at below four or 5000 instead of diving back up to the 10000 And you can see uh, it's very common for, for somebody to need to run a sale during times when uh, BSR is lagging. And so when you lower the price down, it increases velocity. Now, this is a classic 101 technique. Every store ever, every retailer ever uses this technique. But I, I think sometimes that people forget what's going to happen after the sale ends. And unlike Prime Day, where Prime Day comes and goes, consumers are trained to hold on to their money before and after. Why would you go to Amazon four days after Prime Day? Because all of the sales are over, everybody's prices are higher. Why would you spend a week before Prime Day when you could wait for those sales? Now, of course, 2022 sales were basically last year's regular prices due to inflation. But the point I'm making here is that consumers, when there's a big holiday event, are trained to shop. And that means they don't shop before and they don't shop after. Now, there's, there's obviously a big uh, cadence when we go into the Q4 rush. It, it basically is an airplane lifting off and it never f goes back down until Christmas Day. So you don't have that constraint during Cyber Monday, Black Friday weekend, Turkey Five as they're going to call it sometimes. Uh, that, that lift continues. But when you have a specific paid holiday like Prime, Hol Prime Day or whatnot, you don't actually get lift on most products. You can have a really great week but if you look at the like uh, sales over time, it's actually pretty static. There isn't a big benefit to Prime Day for most uh, sellers on the Amazon platform, third-party sellers, that is. Amazon obviously makes out like a cow, 
uh, and they make billions of dollars selling Echoes, Kindles, and other devices, and the free branding and the press that comes with it, right? Like it's a, just a giant national holiday that they made up. It's a retail shopping holiday. But if you think about this, when you run the sale on your own product and you're able to generate that lift, it propels you. And, and so when you raise the price back up, you maintain some of the benefits that you gained during the price reduction. And that is the proof and, and all the proof you need to understand that you need sales to get sales on Amazon. So when you're launching the product, you need to pay careful attention to load everything into the system for the day of launch. That includes your common basic stuff like title, photos, but it also includes some of the more advanced things like the search term field for SEO purposes, your brand story. Most people still haven't got their brand story up. Here's an example of what a brand story can look like. You just scroll down. It's right above the regular A plus content down here. Here is my A plus content. So when you go to launch your product, you need the brand story built. You need the A plus content up and you need to cross promote your product by ranking it to or linking it rather to your other products like this. You also need to consider uh, building out your brand store. So when somebody clicks on the brand store, it pulls up this. Now, watch as I type in Age of Sage into the search box here. If I didn't have the brand store, this is what Amazon does. It defaults to the search where you can see all of these competing products like this. You can see bath bombs. You can see all my products, but what happens is above that, you see competing products. And that's why you have to have the brand store upon launch. Part of the reason people used rebates back in the day is because they were trying to game the system to generate orders into the system to lift the product faster, which is another uh, proof of the point I'm making in this video that you need sales to get sales. If that wasn't true, why do rebates? Why game the search algorithm by pushing super URLs? Why even do external traffic if that was the case, right? Um, a lot of um, naive brand sellers will, will launch on Amazon and say, well, I, did, I launched the product. Amazon's, Amazon's supposed to sell this for me. And they forget that digital marketing doesn't really work that way. You still have to run Amazon PPC, which is also why when you launch the product, you really need to have Amazon PPC fully set up and built out, segmented. One of the most common biggest mistakes I see people make with Amazon PPC is that they only set up like one or two campaigns instead of setting up an auto, a broad match, a phrase match, an exact match, and setting up like 20 different campaigns for sponsored keywords with different portfolio of keywords. Sometimes I'll see a campaign structure and I'll, I'll load in and I'll see like 100 keywords on one campaign. That's not a best practice. You want to really keep that to five keywords per campaign, maybe 20 in some situations. But by, by and large, um, one of the other biggest mistakes I see people make is they negate a good keyword. They're like, oh, I'm going to start with auto campaigns when I first launch out, and then I'm going to promote those to exact match PBC campaigns. That is a really bad practice. You do want to promote them, to be clear. You still want to create that exact match keyword campaign, but you actually want to maintain it in its auto format as well. And the reason this matters is because it still performs better on the auto campaign. Most people don't realize this. A keyword that starts in an auto campaign and does well will typically outperform an exact match keyword campaign. And, and that really throws people off. And, and I see this very commonly with PPC experts. They're like, well, you negate it from the auto and you've got it in the exact now. That, that is a terrible practice. Never negate a good keyword. The same principle that I'm talking about in this video applies here. You need sales to get sales. Well, the auto campaign is literally producing you sales right now and will probably produce sales at a cheaper A cost while in the auto format than it will in the exact match campaign. First of all, it takes like 60 days for a new campaign to really come online and produce at its best A cost. So you are resetting your honeymoon period as it relates to a PPC honeymoon period. It's a little bit separate when you create a new campaign. This is why when you have campaign structures, you typically don't want to delete them. You want to fix them. You want to go in there and you know lower bids or add new keywords, but never like shut off the whole account. You don't want to shut off all PPC because you need those sales because they, they create additional sales in the algorithm over time by having that history. 
The whole point of this video is that the more sales you generate, the more history you build with Amazon, whether it's on PPC, whether it's in organic, or just the overall BSR, the best sellers rank, the better you get at selling units, the more sales will come. It's a snowball effect. It's an avalanche. You see all of the rocks falling down the cliff together. Instead of it being pebbles, it will be lots of uh, big boulders falling down those cliffs. So my name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy, and I have dozens of videos talking about BSR, talking about the honeymoon period, and you're going to want to check those videos out next.